Hello friends, my name is Buchi Odibo, you're welcome. Uh, basically, we're talking on uh, heaven on earth, not as a slogan, but as a reality of God's mind for his church presently. Jesus, while he was teaching his disciples how to pray, he said that it will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That was God's plan, that was God's dream, that's God's purpose. And how did Jesus accomplish it? He wanted to be a promise, a prayer, and a fulfillment. The promise was forgiven. In Genesis 1 to this says, let us make man. Our image after our likeness, they might have dominion on the earth. The image of God is a heavenly reality. Picking up the image of God is, is a heavenly reality, the spirit of God. But it must be expressed on the earth. Jesus prayed it when he came on the earth. How did he accomplish it? He did it when he went to the cross in obedience to his father. He tested that he was buried on the day of resurrection. was the release of the spirit. The resurrection of Christ is the release of the spirit. And once the Spirit of God, it carries all of God, all of divinity. So releasing heaven on earth is a supply of the Spirit, which is tied to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. Now let's look at the scripture as we begin to build this understanding. Matthew 28 verse 18. This was a declaration he made after his resurrection. Matthew 28 verse 8. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. All authority. All authority has been given to me in heaven. The authority has always been heavenly. God's authority is a realm of perfection where things are done orderly. There's no rebellion, there's no sickness, there's no disease. All the vestiges of life, all the, the negative side of life is not found in heaven. Heaven is a perfect order. Now Jesus at the point of resurrection, through the instrument of the Spirit, said all this has been given to him. But see, I want to clarify something there. Go back there, Matthew 28. Matthew 28, verse 2 and 18. And Jesus came and spake to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven. So the authority was going to display that is divine, is heavenly, it's not earthly. All authority has been given to me in heaven. On on the earth. Now, before Jesus came, I mean, Adam sinned and corruption came into the world. The system of this world was corrupt. And God keeps on picking men from every dispensation to teach, to show his plan and purpose of, bring, of his son coming. But Jesus rose on the earth and said, All powers in the heaven. He said, All authority, all power has been given to me in heaven. So it's a heavenly reality. And on the earth. You know, we used to think he said, All powers in heaven and on the earth. No. Powers. All power in heaven, which is purely pure, it is pure, it is holy, it is godly. All that is given to him by the supply of the Spirit, which is now on the earth through resurrection power. So he was not saying all powers in heaven and on the earth. There is nothing on the earth to be given to him. The earth is corrupt. The earth is filthy. There is nothing to desire. There is nothing that the Lord desires on the earth. So he was, what he was bragging here is that the divine order, the way things are orderly in heaven, the way things are established in heaven by the Spirit, has been given to him. Now it is on the earth. This authority in heaven has come to the earth. Heaven has invaded the earth. Through his resurrection, he has made available what is in heaven. Praise the name of the Lord. Now look at verse 19. I was still on 28, verse 18 and 19. Go therefore make disciples of all nations. The word disciples make students. In this capacity of the heavenly reality of the systems and the patterns of heaven, the procedure of heaven, the way things are done in heaven, they're going to make disciples. They're going to educate men on this dimension. I'm talking about heaven on earth. So the resurrection of Jesus Christ made available the spirit of Christ, made the spirit available. That any man that received that spirit is now opened to heaven. Opened to heaven. Let me let's go, let's back a little bit. Still Matthew, Matthew. When he was speaking to Peter concerning the, the church, before the, he established the church, he gave Peter a picture of what the church will be. Matthew chapter 16. Praise the name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 16. Oh my God, I went to 18. Okay. Matthew 16. But let's look from verse 16. Matthew 16, 16. Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon by Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. The source is heaven. And I also say to you that you appear on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. 
Now, the emphasis is verse 19. Look at verse 19. He said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you allow or you bind on earth will be allowed or bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth will be lost in heaven. Jesus was showing Peter the dynamics, the operation of, of the church, which is established from heaven. He said, the flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but to my Father who is in heaven. He said, I give you the keys. I will give you access. When I establish the church, the ecclesia, men who have been washed by the blood, whose sins have been forgiven, and they have received the gift of righteousness. He said, I'm going to give you access to heaven. You are citizens, citizenry. Your citizenship will be from heaven. Your, 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 your nativity will be divine. He said, I will give you access. What is he talking about here? He's talking about men that will connect to the mind of God, who will be able to appear in the boardroom of heaven, hear the whispers of divinity, and implement them on the face of the earth. Child of God, Christianity is not another religion. Christianity is the platform Christ has brought through his resurrection power, that men will receive the spirit, that will give them access to divine order, how things are done orderly. That's why you can't work with God with having access. Say, Peter, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you. It's a pattern I want to raise. Every great man God has raised on the face of the earth, men and women who, through forgiveness of sin and the gift of righteousness, have access into the bathroom of God. They know the mind of God. They're able to connect to the thoughts of God and they bring it to heaven. They bring it to the earth. I beg your pardon. Jesus said in Matthew 28, verse 18, we just said, All powers in heaven and on earth, all powers that is in heaven, is not on the earth. By his resurrection power, by the supply of the Spirit, heaven is made available to us. Once you come to believe the gospel, God, this heaven by the Spirit is tattooed in your spirit. The Bible said, He that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. You become one with God. You become one. The Spirit makes you as you as it is in heaven, so are you on this earth. Praise the name of the Lord. I mean, this is so amazing. When God began to, you know, communicate this in my spirit, it was so amazing. Christ has brought it. His resurrection has made it available to you. Now you have received him. There's no more of heaven that is in heaven that is that more that is in your soul. I want to repeat that. The measure of divinity of Christ in the heaven is the same dimension he has allowed to be in your spirit. He has brought it. That is all that is of heaven. All powers in heaven. There's no more, there's nothing extra. All to the believer is available in your spirit. Heaven has invaded your spirit. Heaven is resident in your spirit because Christ is at work in your spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. That's so what you as you begin to assess him in the place of fellowship. In the place of obedience, communion, you begin to assess the dimensions of Christ in you, the dimensions of heaven in you. That what you allow, what does it mean to allow? What you allow to flow into your soul is what heaven will allow to flow in. Now, going back to Matthew 28, verse 18, let's run it again. All authority has given unto me in heaven, which is not on the earth. The power of heaven. Night has come upon the earth. That's the literal translation of it. That which is divine, that which is perfect, has come on the earth, upon the earth. It's not like I said earlier, powers in heaven and powers on earth can be given to him. No! Everything on earth is inferior to what is heaven. There is nothing to be compared with earth. Heaven, heaven is perfect. There is chaos here. So Jesus, through resurrection, by the supply of his spirit, has brought the power of all that is in heaven upon the earth. That's the accurate translation. Upon the earth. Hallelujah. So what is this power? He said, go make disciples. The capacity, which is a divine order to convert a sinner to become a righteous man. The power that turns us from the, from the sons of darkness to become sons of God. If you want to change a nation, you want to change a city, you want to change a region, begin to change the people. That's what the gospel is. The Bible says that that power of conversion, it says go now make disciples of all nations. I'm reading from that same Matthew 28 verse 18. Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven, which is now on the earth. If now heaven is on earth, what do you do? Go evangelism. So we reach out. Go therefore, make disciples of all nations. 
So the conversion is the source of men. Preaching the gospel that converts them, that they believe the gospel, they receive the spirit, they are converted, they become what? Disciples. What is the word disciple? Students of heaven on earth. Students of the dimensions, how things is, how God runs things in heaven. You know, when, when God made the first man, Adam, in the garden, he raised him as a test. It was like a, a nursery state in agriculture. That's what is called a nursery state before you it will transplant for the plant to grow majorly. You make a nursery. The Garden of Eden, this the eastern part of Eden, God raises it as a nursery, as a type that if Adam had gotten the pattern, God would have not used him to spread onto the ends of the earth. But he couldn't get it. So Christ had to come to get it to spread it up. He has gotten it now. He said, now go make disciples. Teach men, educate men on the patterns of divinity, on the patterns of heaven that man now has received. The image of God is available. And can be receiving the image after his likeness. The man can rule onto the uttermost part of the earth. So what is the instrument of rulership for man? The new man, the new creation is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why Paul said in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, So I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus. It's the power of God unto salvation. So God's power is demonstrated through the gospel. When we preach the gospel, when we communicate Christ, first, the spirit of Christ, which carries all of heaven. Because the spirit of Christ is Christ, which carries all of heaven, comes to preside the spirit of a man. As you have received it, now you begin to yield yourself. The spirit of Christ begins to flow into your soul, which begins to bring forth your conduct and your lifestyle. That's when heaven has invaded a life. That's how heaven transforms a life. Praise the living Lord. Child of God, this is the seasons we are in. We are men allow heaven to overwhelm them. And in the place of fellowship, we allow this depth of heaven in our spirit to flow to our soul. Changing our character, our conduct, our lifestyle, our our, 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 our emotions have been trained and tutored by the Spirit of Christ at work in us. These are amazing days. Heaven has invaded the earth. But you see, I, I made an earlier statement. I said there was, it was a vision. It was a dream. It was God's plan. In Genesis 1.26, when Jesus came physically, he prayed about, Thy will be done on earth. But it doesn't end in the place of prayer. In the place he went to accomplish it, Prayer energizes him to do the will. You know what prayer does? It enables us to do the will of God. Our life is not just in the place we place of prayer is where we begin to reconfigure our mind, our soul, to align to what God wants us to do. After prayer, there are things to do on the earth. It's a place of obedience. Jesus, after he had prayed, that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He went to get sermon, he went further. You know what he said? Not my will. There is an earthly will. There is always an alternative plan. He said, not my will, but your will be done. When he made that proclamation, he had to last step to the next, the next part of obedience. What was the obedience? He, was needed, he needed to die because that was the assignment. Buried on the third day, the faithfulness of the Father raised him from the dead through his spirit. And that was the supply. This is the fulfillment of the vision. So first, the vision is given. The vision is prayed about. Praise the name of the Lord. And decisions are made. In the place of prayer, it energizes you to obey the vision. That's what prayer does. It, energizes, it gives you supernatural energy. It opens you to divine strength. It opens you to the grace of God. So you can step into the place of obedience. Some persons are listening to me this day. You might be in the place of making contact with the vision of God for your life. Well, that's amazing. As good as it is, that's not the end of it. As a matter of fact, that's the beginning of the journey. The next phase is to begin to engage in the place of prayer. Prayer begins to energize you to prepare for the place of obedience. You don't stop in the place of prayer. Some have gone to the place of prayer and they prayed and prayer and say, Oh, I've prayed and prayed, nothing is working. No. Prayer is to energize you. Prayer is to renew your mind. It's to reconfigure your philosophy, your thought patterns, your psyche, to align to what God wants you to do. Prayer launches you into the place of obedience. Child of God, so I feel like your this next step is the place of obedience. Prayer will never answer your strength of obedience. No matter how long you pray. Is to prepare you to obey. Prayer has its own place. Oh, I'm a, I love it. I love prayer. Amazing. There's nothing you can do without coming to that place of it. Because that's where you will exchange your weakness for strength. But what's the strength for? To obey God. Jesus, after Gethsemane, after he had labored, he stepped into the place of prayer. I tell my friends, I say, listen, it was in the place of prayer that he received energy to overcome the trauma of the cross. 
when there is no intimate prayer, communion with the Lord, I believe I, I prefer to call it the conversation of the Spirit. Their obedience becomes far-fetched. This is why a lot of folks are not able to obey God. They see that, oh, wow, are you sure I can do that? Because it takes supernatural strength to do the will of a supernatural God. Your human strength is not enough to carry you on. So prayer, prayer, communion, intimacy, interaction, conversation of God with God, conversation of the Spirit, energizes you. And Jesus stepped into the corridor of the cross. In the cross, he went through the shame, but he didn't shake. He went through all the accusation. He didn't move. He was dead to self. He was dead to ambition. He yielded to the will of the Father. And on the third day, the faithfulness of God raised him from the dead. That was how the vision was fulfilled. Jesus has fulfilled the vision. But hear me, we have received the Spirit. So what are we now? We are not fulfilling any vision. We are in the days of manifestation. Every vision in Christ is fulfilled by resurrection power. That's why we are, by faith in Him, we receive the Spirit. Why do we have the Holy Spirit? Why have you received Him? Why has heaven entered our spirit through the place of the Spirit? It's for us now to manifest. The church is in the day of manifestation. After the resurrection of Christ, the church was better. The Bible said the endless expectation of creation is the manifestation of the sons of God. What is manifestation? It's a place of submitting to whom you have in your spirit. As you yield to the Spirit of God in you, there will be a flow of the Spirit of Christ into your soul. Then your body, inevitably, unhindered, will manifest the dimensions of heaven on earth. We are the days of heaven on earth. The days are glorious. Then we are in the best of times. Church of Jesus. This is a time to engage the Spirit. Step into the conversation. It doesn't matter the stage where you are. Are you just catching a vision from the Lord? Are you in the place of intercession and praying, just seeking the face of God, trusting God for energy? Are you in the place of obedience? Receive grace. There's grace to obey God. Many men have gone through this path. Listen to me. When you encounter him in the place of intimacy, place of prayer, he energizes you. God bless you. And remain your host, Bye for now. Love you.